So here it is drawn out, a few lines, I went across the rooftop, across the ground. The problem I think we have is it's sunlit on these faces and they're quite close to the sky and yet we've got no ways to pull them back in. Um, I don't know if I risk doing anything permanent up here. I might put a brush mark down the middle and I might put one lower there. We can always slightly darken the sky to throw up the sunlight. And I may do that for you to show you how it's done. If you put your colours in here and they blow a bit, you know, they blow into the sky, then you can darken the sky. But if you're doing that, you won't want very intense colour because that'll still come through your sky. So what we need to do is to introduce some wash here and then tilt our board fairly steep if it starts to pull up, all right? You'll put your board very steep to dry. Now, other than that, if we put it down here and it doesn't travel up, as a second wash, we can just get the edge in and dilute it back to the first colour, okay? But that's the trouble something like this presents when you're trying to paint it with an overall wash. It's a painting that maybe, probably, it might be advantageous to paint it block on block, you know, to get the crisp edge. But if you're going to paint it block on block, you need to come down with your sky, and of course you've got that division there. So you must make sure that you're not allowing things to dry, all right? Um, I think that I've convinced myself, and I think this is a case where it may well be worth painting block on block. So let's go in with a nice soft brush, a mop, and let's get a nice sort of sky in, and we're gonna paint it block on block, leaving white paper, okay? First thing I must do is get a big puddle of paint ready, isn't it? Let's go for it. I'm going to stand up because my setup today is rather awkward. Right, let's get some ultramarine into that puddle. I'm going to start light, make it light down when I go down. Right, I've mixed that into the brush. Let's go and I can add water as I go down. The problem is going to be cutting around all that architecture and dipping an awful lot at the moment to fill that bead. There it is. I'm going to put some water in. I'm not very ergonomic now because I'm painting over this side. I need to bring my water over here. I'm going to rearrange the room. There we are. And now I can go in there. Across there. I'll keep it reasonably strongish for now. All right. There. Now I'm going to add some more water to that wash to try and dilute it. And I'm bringing it down again. Here's where it gets tricky because I have to try and divide now around there. Let's come down again. I'm trying to move fairly rapidly because it's still reasonably warm here in South Wales. More water, and let's go down with a final run. I've dripped off the brush then. I've got a big bead now, nice, so that's good. I can bring this big bead through here. I can bring it, oops, see it dripping again? Down through here. There. Let's bring this bead through then. Let's keep moving this. My paper isn't fixed, so it's moving. It's all going wrong for me this morning, yeah? Right. Bring that down. I don't like painting this way. I, if you overlap an edge, you get a line, you know, when we paint the buildings. But it is, I suppose, a sensible way to paint something like this. No more liquid now. I just want to bring this down, this lovely bead. I can cut it into the buildings. Some folk would bring this wash down through the shadow sides of the buildings as well because it can act as a shadow but we'll just play it really block on blocky and we'll cut to an edge there that's a pretty tough wash you know to get all the way around these buildings and not to get it lining down it comes i can go through there surely it's in shade mm, i can go through here that's in shade 
this is in shade for some reason there. So I could go through that, couldn't I? Ah, let's make it easy on myself and just come down through there. All right, there. Now, just because it's me, and I can't do anything easily, can I? So just because it's me, I know we've got some more experienced people here. What I want you to do now is to just down at the street line, I'm introducing some clear water, all right? And I want to just get some sort of shadow eyes in sort of areas, some blues and that down below the street line. And then I can come up through the path there, let it all just run through. And I just want to put some sort of real shadowy atmospheres under here with bits of blue. And I'll probably use bits of, a little bit of violet. And I, I thought that's a, that's a risky thing to try, but we'll do it, look. All right? So that, that makes what was already a tricky enough first pass even more tricky. But we are on week seven, so I've got to test your prowess sometimes, some way, haven't I? All right. Um, let's... Now the first pass is in, and it's unusual for me in that it wasn't an overall wash, all right? I decided not to try to place these in in case they blew against the sky, and then we'd have all sorts of problems trying to pull the sky back down in tone to cover the edge, etc. So we decided to do it this way. And it shows that there's more than one or two ways to plan a painting. So what I'm gonna do now is basically finish off my overall wash. I'm going to come from the building down. I'm not worried about finicking with edges. I'm not worried about shadows. I'm just worried about filling up the white paper here. I'm going to pass back down through this, which is meant to be like a, a light shadow area. And I'm just going to introduce colors. I've got some canopies here. I can flick some colors in. So all this shape is going to be placed as if it was the first wash. And I'll worry about separation after. Okay, so let's get a, a wash alive. Let's go in to the raw sienas, as Martin suggests. Let's go in to touch a burnt sienna. As Martin suggests, if this doesn't work, blim, blim, Martin, not me. Let's go into a bit of the red, sundown red I got here. Mm, that's a bit deep because the rose, permanent rose, is a bit lighter. But that's nice, I can start that. I can start that, look. All right, rose sienna, um, burnt, and a bit of that. So it'll do. And I can bias it with some rose sienna and things, because these buildings are all sorts, of course. Let's get going then. This is the bit I dislike. If I overlap any of these edges now, I'm going to have a line, okay? So I've got to be reasonably careful with a brush. And this brush has got a lovely point anyway, so I should be halfway there. Need a bead, of course. Let's redib. I find these edges quite easy, look, because you can see. But it's this back edge where you've got to tilt the brush and just stroke down there. All right, let's add some raw sienna with that to, to sort of swing the changes a little bit. Okay, well, maybe not. It's, it's changed a little bit, isn't it? And let's add some more. I'm gonna add some of this um, transparent yellow. That'll change it, you watch now. Yep, nearly. I'll add a bit more transparent yellow because this is in sunlight. I'm coming through everything, all right? There. You can see what I mean by that little dark edge there. See it if you overlap? It's a nuisance, which is why I don't like painting block on block. Look at that, my bead is going. I must make sure that I keep a bead. It's not hard, I've only been doing it 30 years. Why can't I manage it? Let's come through again. 
there. And I can paint fairly broad, you know, because this is a lovely light wash. Let's vary that with a bit more of the red colour in and see what happens, see? I can just swing it in. Now, I've got some, um, well, I'm going to place some kind of canopies down in here. So I'm quite excited about them because they give me the opportunity for a nice colour change. See these canopies? And I won't fuss. I won't fuss. I'll just let them move and merge. It doesn't matter. Just little bits like that, little gaps. Uh, I think I'll have a quick rinse, touch it on the tissue, and maybe come into some lovely greenery. If it'll come alive. Come alive, green. There it is. I can just place some greenery in there. Maybe a bit in there. I'm not over there yet, am I? But let's get some... What other colour can I use? Blue, blue. Let's get some cerulean. It is quite warm. You know, these colours are dried in the palette. I need to spray them again. Let's put a bit of cerulean in there. Quite dark. See? It doesn't matter what we're putting in. It's just nice, different wash. I'm going back in now to my raw sienna, burnt sienna first wash. And I'm going to try and whip through here quickly. I've got this beading, so I'm okay. I'm going to whip through here quickly. This is a dark, it doesn't matter. I'll whip through there quickly. I need to get some more wash replenished. Look, I'm virtually, virtually out of wash. So I can replenish quickly. I don't mind doing this sort of replenishing thing because for me, it's not going to be exactly the same wash as I mixed before. And therefore I'm getting this variety that I keep whinging on and on to you about. Bring it down. Let's change it again. I put a bit of blue into it then. See how it's gone very sort of flattish and grey. Now we'll go back into the original wash. Get it in. I'm going to put some more of the blue verandas or whatever over there. Not verandas, awnings. Right, now we're coming down through the base of this. Can I do anything cunning? Like leave lip tops on cars and people? Well, if I've got the skill, I can. So I'll just come around there, there, and there. I'll probably go straight over these after. I always spend so much time cutting them out, and then in the urge to get the wash on, I race back through. So there it goes. Let's keep it warm for now. Well, under the cars, I'm going to go with the blue. Just a bit of a blue sky wash. It is. There's nothing to it. There's no guts to it. But it, what I'm after is cutting out certain highlights. I'm going to put a bit of a warmer red figure in there. And I will just, it's just splashing colours. It doesn't matter if it's red, if it's pink. You know, it's just put a little bit of colour in there. I'm going to put some blue, stronger blue, back into this sort of truck. See, I'm, I'm deliberately being sloppy because I don't want you to be worrying and anxious and tight. And the foreground is going to be so light, I'm just going to add water to that mess. Just add water to that mess, and I'm just going to bring it through. All right. I think I will warm the front <clears throat> back up. Just a little bit with raw sienna. There we are. And that's the second wash, quite a tricky one. Started from the top, trying to keep a bead, traveling through everything, not being afraid to change and pop some colors in where there was canopies, etc. The hard thing I think is as we're traveling through, <clears throat> very difficult to keep a bead um, because of all the different shapes you're changing. <clears throat> but if you don't, you'll have all lines and marks within you. As I came to the bottom then, put some more colors through here again. The blue underwash is showing through, of course, which helps us. And then I just took the pedal away, run up a bit of warmth there with Rosiana. I've lost my red and things there. See, at the moment now, you could intentionally do a little bit. Look, you could do a little bit, you see? A little bit of wet and wet work, couldn't you? It's still alive at the moment, not much. So don't be frightened to do that either. Look, I've lost my blue from the, um, from the, the, the lorry truck thing. So why can't I just slide that back in? It is wet enough. See? On the cars. Ooh, look what he's doing now. So I'm now, after thinking I've finished, I've now dived into a whole wet and wet stage because this is still alive 
and still able to take some color. But it's drying very quickly. So I think it's time for me, um, time for me to stop. Now, what we've achieved here via these two washes is basically an overall wash, isn't it? All right. And I've left little bits of this first. Could have been masking fluid as well. Now I need to wrap some second washes around this. In theory, this is two firsts, isn't it? Although, over the middle, you could argue it's a second. Now, there's different ways we can go. We could start fiddling with all the windows, or we could stay quite large. And I think what I want to do is to stay reasonably large, okay? So I'm going to place that big shadow wash in and then we can start working on the smaller shapes from there all right so let's have a look i want to use a bigger brush than a smaller brush and i've got that and i've got that i haven't got a middle size so what am i going to do i think i'll take the dangerous option and use this but keep dipping how am I going to shadowize this? I think I can do it basically with a little bit of the raw sienna and a lot of violet because my wash is quite strong on there and I'm sure if I use the violet um, the underwash will show through, all right? Why aren't I using blue? Because I think it'll turn it green. So I've got this ultramarine violet. I don't think that's generous enough. I'm not going to, I'm going to vary this wash but not a lot. So I'm going to re-dip that pedal, try and get it in there. These are lovely brushes, these Princeton things, they're synthetic sable brushes, but they hold a nice sum of the water. Let's see if this is dark enough. All right, let's place it under here first. I don't think it is. I don't think that's dark enough for my tastes. So what I'll do, I'll come back in with another big dollop of that, mix it in, and let's go. That's a bit better. Only a bit. And bring it down in a bee. You know that's not dark enough, no way. Let's have a if you've got sunlight, especially in Marrakesh, you've got to have something a bit richer than that. Surely drop it back in. Let's get this alive and flowing. Now let's take this pedal down through. I'm going to create some apparent architecture just by dribbling things in and across. I can take my time as long as I keep the speed here and I'm keeping an eye on the sketch. All right, let's come down. There. Let's vary it a bit more raw sienna, perhaps in the mix, what that'll do, I don't know. There it is. I've got a big lump in the paper there, but my wash is flowing. Right, here we go. This is the tricky one now then, because I've got to spread this wash in and through. See the, see the amount of water this brush is picking up? It's capable of a lot, isn't it? I'm just, it's, but I am filling, it's not, I'm not scraping it around, I'm filling it in the puddle, and it's able to really drop a volume of water on you. Let's take a look at some of these canopies. Just gonna cut around them a bit and then shadowize them. This comes quickly out there. Phone's ringing, I apologize for that. Tina's gonna have to dive in and answer it. Tina to the rescue look. There we are. Hello. If we won the lottery, you'd hear it live. If we have won, I am temporarily stopping the class. Only temporary, of course. Down we come. Same wash. Down it comes. And I think I'm surviving all these big beads. Not such, such a big bead there, though. Alright. I'm going to start adding into this violet. I'm going to start adding a little touch of blue into this violet. Or I might even just use that blue there. We'll see now. Let's see how it goes. 
a little bit of artillery or something, mix them both, half mix them, there we are. And what do I get? Oops, I thought I half mixed them, I haven't mixed it there. Yeah, I can I can soften these canopies in before they dry. So again, what I'm giving you this week, I'm afraid, is a reasonably technical one. We do tend to vary, don't we, week to week with different grades of sort of of work. And what makes this a little bit more technical than the other ones, I suppose, is that we've got a fairly complex shape here that we're trying to work around. But look, as long as you work with beads, you should be okay. So let's bring that down to this line. Let's cut around these up and over there. All right, now I'm going to do something for the more advanced amongst you. I'm going to gather that bead. I'm going to get some stiff paint, burnt sienna. Come on, burnt sienna, ultramarine. And I'm going to go back under the canopies. There. And I can just do the openings just that way with that stiffer paint. Dropping down. See? I need so much in the distance. I'm giving you some tricky washes this week. I am indeed. This is why, of course, I did put that little thing out, didn't I, saying about doing the beginners only video if you were a beginner. Having said that, we have had various, various grades of difficulty. And if you're painting this in a rainy suburb somewhere, then it should be a lot easier than this. Can I go through that? I'm just going through the car shapes for now. All right. And I'm going to bring this across there soon. So there's the sort of wash in of the shadow. What do I do with the base of it? Well, I've put water on my brush. I've half rinsed my brush. And I'm just going to dissolve these for now. All right. Water on my brush. And I can just dissolve these bottom shapes for now. All right, and that will make it slightly easier. Now you can see it's run to the bottom of the page. I introduce more water and I can just break that up for now. All right, that's something I used to do a lot when I was more inexperienced because I didn't know which way to go. So I would panic and I would just take the wash away. It gives you time to think. All right, there's a shadow under there. We're going to put a door under here, and that's me down on this wash view then. All right, let's put a shadow under here. Break it up there. Burn sienna and blue. I know some of you like having the recording, and I must confess to you, I suppose, this would be a good one to have the recording for and do again, wouldn't it? Softening these things off, look. That's it, I'm eager to finish. See what it's done? So we've pulled the shadow through. We're not all about detail here yet. We can go back in. It's a difficult enough wash, mainly because of the shape you're threading it through as it is. If we bring the wash down under the awnings, I've added some stiffer, stronger burnt sienna and blue, and I've just put it under the front awnings. As I went to the back awnings, it's sort of exhausted, but I don't mind, that gives me distance. I came down through the cars, cutting little bits of light out. We can use those lights, and then I dissolved it into the pavement. And I had a separate little wash, which you can take a breather for here, just to cut that sort of canopy out there. All right, and that starts to sort of populate Populate the little market square, doesn't it? So we're ready now to sort of try and detail up this really. So let's take it section by section for you and let's deal with this little corner here. Again, using my sketch, I can see that there's some nice windows, there's a roof, there's busyness on. So let's busy this and we can bring it across to here. Um, I don't need a rigger because I've got a nice brush with a point. Let's develop it from the roof down. 
I'm going to put a burnt sienna sort of pan tile roof it in. Before I do that, I'm going to do all the squiggles and stuff they do on the roofs because these roofs in Marrakesh were full of things like satellite dishes and things. Let's get you over the piece then. There we are. And let's put a satellite dish in there. There. That's rather easier than Sky could do it, isn't it? Burnt sienna and blue, reasonably stiff. Where's my blue? It is too warm. These paints are dry in. Once you wet your paints, they should stay alive. If your paint's dry, you know you're in dangerous watercolour territory. Let's flick that off there. Join it to there. I just want to make this roof a little bit busy, as they are, you know. Another little aerial off there that they've got to try and get some reception. Join these things up if you want. There. And that just makes that more interesting. Then I come down with some burnt sienna. Mm. I need to rinse my brush. I've got a little bit strong. I want some life in this burnt sienna. I don't want it to be in shadow, so I'm using almost neat burnt sienna. And I'll bring it down over there. All right. And that gives me the roof edge there. I need to vary that, so I'm going into a bit of the shadow colour I had. Just to vary at this edge. Got to have some variety. Stick it out over there. That's good. I can stay now with the shadow colour because I'm going to just put some little shadows under here. That's it. Just to suggest that there's blocks and stuff keeping this up. It just adds a bit of detail. There we go. Right. Now I've got some shutters on the doors so i'm going to just put a nice bit of color in probably green here we go it's just going to be a nice lick of green and i can finish these after a lot of things in watercolor even this small shape here they have different stages and this is the first stage of these isn't it and it's always light to dark isn't it so I'm just placing some shutters here and I can model the shutters when they dry. So there's water there now. I want to vary it. So I'm softening off the base of that. All right. I'm just going to put something else in here because it, it needs a bit of detail. So, so I'm putting a little sort of plaque thing there. Like there's a yucky dog outside now as well. I'm up against it today. I'm up against it today. So what I'll do, I'll pause there. Because that's nearly enough detail there now. And then when that dries, we can finish those off. So a quick little stage for you now. Just to do the roof area and come down to there. Okay. Okay, someone spotted a face in there. Um, it's now dry there. Let's finalize the detail in there. Start suggesting the detail in there, okay? And we've got this to finalize detail there. Then we've got the road line and that's it. Um, but I bet that'll take us pretty close to the mark. So, I need to put some shadows in the doors, in the, in, in the, in the, um, what are they called? We'll be fitting these shut shutters. We'll be fitting these shutters soon now with the thing in heat we got here. Nope, a bit stronger. Burnt sienna and blue with maybe tint to the green because I want now to put some final darks in there there it comes there it comes obviously a figure seven because the shadow is coming from that side and I'm just going to dribble down some gaps in the shutters there I'll redo that 
Okay. I'm gonna place a dark over this figure there. And I'm gonna wind down the body with a little bit of the dark I've already got on the burnt sienna and that, and now a touch of red. Not enough red. Let me get you into this figure. Just a little bit of red to sway the shadow. There, down the back of the body, down the back of the arm, perhaps, down there. Because they all wear these big sort of onesie things because of the sun, I think. Let's get these sort of legs in. There. Still trying to make this convinced. Let's put some soft edges in. I got myself embroiled now, haven't I? You know, it was all coming so nice and simply before. And now I'm embroiled in a tussle with a, a lady in Marrakesh. Let's put this across there. Let's get some pure raw sienna. I'm going to place a face. I'm going to place a hand. There we are. And that suffice for that side, I think. It just about sets that in. Now I want to come across and start suggesting, using the sketch, the detail for this side. I'm going to increase the darks up here. So I'm going to put a little dark there, burnt sienna, and a dark along there. All right, and I can also, of course, flick in the little antennae up there. All right, I can emphasize the deepest recesses of dark within that. And what I'm going to do with these is suggest them again, use the sort of mix, reasonably stiff. We have a bit of water there if I want it, reasonably stiff. I'm just going to sneak in with the top of these, leave the blob on them, blob, blob on the top there, blob, and these, leave a blob, redib, leave a blob. Why am I doing that? Because I've rinsed the brush ish, I've got some damp water on it, and I just want to lose the bottom edge. Why am I doing that? Because I've looked, and that's what happens. And it's a much more painterly way to do these. See? I'm getting some of the original warm shadow wash now. Strengthening it with a bit of, bit of sienna, raw sienna. I just want to place some apparent detail, see? And darks and through there. There. I haven't got any, but I'm going to place some windows there, too. Just one, maybe two. We've got all sort of signs and things up above there on the roof. And I think it's worth placing that in with some blue or something, but shadow is blue. Just to busy this roof up. Because it's a pretty boring edge, isn't it? Let's be truthful. Busy that up there. Get some red. I can just put something else on the roof. Now I'm going to get some stiffer paint and I'm going to just introduce some calligraphy between these. The old aerial. Some calligraphy down there, link with shapes, isn't it? All right. And it's all about just making the roof line slightly more interesting. With this dark, I'm going to place some windows in these. Again, though, I want repetition with variation. So I just put a bit of water on the brush. And I've got hardly any window there, look. There, and now they vary. Again, with quite the dark, I can suggest the 
continuation of some shadow lines under there and of course I can just do oops keep the um, perspective look I can just do the ghost of windows through here and again I want to lose edges with a damp brush just to let them go back in nearly there now the only other bits of detail I can see that I might want to add on this building line and of course some shadows under there deeper shadow under there all right um, and I want to add don't I some shutters or some such thing under there so I'll add some closed windows there simple as that simple as that I think that's almost enough for the building. I'm going to just torch you with one little more. I'm just going to put some stripes across there. And some little stripes across there. Back into my dark, I'm afraid, my burnt sienna and blue. This can take a shocking amount of time, see. This is why I'm trying to be very quick for you here because I know what's going to happen now. You're going to slow down. You're going to be, you know. And, and it should take time, I suppose, because often this is the bit where we're drawing, you know. So you don't want to be flat out. So there's that building finished. There's that building brought to life with some darks. And all I've got to do is the traffic line. So you can have a good quarter of an hour on those details, I suppose, which does change it. And um, I'll come back then and finish off the traffic line, okay? Over to you. So I've got some level of detail over the mid-ground. Now I need to do as little as I can to finish off the sort of vehicles and things, all right? So it's, it's, it's just boring stuff now. It's just little dots and commas. Let's go. Let's put some very stiff yellow into there. Let me get you on the scene. Let's put some very stiff yellow into there. Maybe into there. And I just want to suggest now, you see, I haven't got to give you the make, model, and number of these vehicles, have I? I've just got to suggest something. There. I'll just put one there, because I don't want too many of that, do I? And I've messed up the shape of them for some reason. To use my little bit of skillful tissue, try and pull up. Isn't it funny you can mess up the smallest of shapes? You know? Well, actually, it's not funny. It's an annoying that you can mess up the smallest of shapes. Let's go into a blue and maybe burnt sienna dark. Blue and burnt sienna dark. And let's try and suggest that, but not all of it. Not all of it, just that much. And then I can dissolve it away. Then I can rinse the brush, dissolve it away. I like this. As you know, I don't like just flat shapes, showing every shape. We don't need to show every shape. I like a shape that moves through tone, moves through edges. There's that. I'll just try and define for us the window in a van here. Still trying to keep a reasonable amount of liquid. Now, if I do this with the same, it's going to be the same. So I've just rinsed the brush a bit. And I'm trying to get this like that. All right. Like that. I can model the top of it with a bit of a roof racky thing or whatever. It's darks, isn't it? I can show the little door thing there. I can get a bluer color, the same color, a cerulean or something. And I can just try and show some of the modeling under here all right there i'm going to show the 
the bump by the map and I and I've got to get the dark underneath these soon and I I'm just gonna put some darks and bits in there. I don't know what that is, neither do you, but it doesn't matter, does it? Alright? I've got that. Let's make it a bit more readable and angular. Yeah. Yeah. We've got this figure. I'm gonna put the figure in. If you can hear it, excuse the noise outside again. It's the um, this Welsh water. Don't know what they're doing. Hopefully they're not cutting us off. That goes down. That's nice, isn't it? That goes down and it gives us another level now in front. I'm getting it all today, isn't I? Another level in front of there, and I can just again drag that away. All right, lighten it with a bit of water, take it away. There, so there's a figure standing out in the street now. I need to let that figure dry if I can do it inside the cars. But let's try this start off light to dark. So let's form this with a light to dark, which is now green. But I'm not scared. There. There. All right. How does that work? Let's bring it down. Let's draw it. We do this with sheep and things, don't we? We draw them first with water. And then when we're convinced of the shape, we can go in with darks. If we're not convinced of the shape, we can get a tissue and we can whack it off with a tissue, all right? So I'm going to do that. That's all right. Let's bring it down. There, there, there. Let's get the shadow in as well, on the ground. There. All right. Let's start with the darks now. It should be all nice and wet there. Eh? I put it in with a reasonably nicely wet wash. And if I don't take forever to mix this, there. Let's get that in. There. Now I'm going in with a really quite stiff burnt sienna and blue, all right? Very stiff, stiff and strong, because I want to define now the darks there, mixing the tire, the darks under there, and the dark under there. That'll do, just lose that, so you don't want it to be too defined. Right? I think that that might have dried now. Don't get me wrong, that's, that's a very hard shape. We're back to this drawing thing again, isn't it? where we need to draw. Is, is, is he or she dry? Yes, no, they're not dry. They wouldn't be, would they? Because I want them to be. That, I can leave. I'm going to leave that, that's all right. All I want to do to these cars, <clears throat> and your cars may be different, you see. It depends how you've drawn them. It depends how your first wash is registered, etc. So... Yeah, this bit is a little bit down to your experience, but what I will say to you is I wouldn't try to just draw the whole shape. I'm trying to put in bits of shape that help suggest what I've already got and convince, you know, bring this down to floor level there. And then I go in with my dark look at the bottom of the car, which is there. Surprisingly lower cars bases. Sometimes the windscreen goes in at least twice or three times to the ground. So let's just get a dark through there. That'll do. That'll do. Well, well, I've almost surprised myself. So I'm virtually sure that that will do. I'll go in a bit stiffer, going to send room blue. I always include things in my work, always have done, because if you go through a series, like, you know, as you, as you saw with the Marrakesh stuff, I paint series, I go through, I get into something for a while, and I'll paint it for a long time. And that's how you get used to the shapes that you're trying to put in. I say you get a feel for what you want, you know? Okay. So there is that. There's the truck. And all I want to do now is to suggest the foreground there by striking a brush up in. That was unsuccessful, you know? Just little bits. And I'm going to put a little shadowy glaze across that which dry. Just drawing in 
some gaps between, some patterns between the papers and that now. Nothing much, but I'm intending this, as I said, to show through a little glaze I'm going to put. I want to put some more detail up in this bit. These things are usually patterned and patterned, but I don't think I'm going to have the time. Um, so I'm going to strike a soft brush again over that now. And then I'm going to call it, I think, finished. And it's ready for your perusal. Back to the mop to end as we often are. I've got a little bit of my first wash there. I'm going to strengthen that with a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of violet. There's the violet. And I'm going to bring it across. Let's get the camera up and out because I'm going to bring it across a long shadow just off piste across there. Bring that through. Get the brush long again now and I can just bring it there. I'm going to link it up actually there. Link it up to that base. And just bring that through and really put some more violet down here to get a darker look. Now, I can take that up through there probably, and up around there, and then I can introduce some water, gentle water, just to lose those edges. I'm going to go into some of my ultramarine blue as well, because I really want that to push forward as a dark in that corner. Maybe it wouldn't harm to do some spatter, but anyway, let's just count that there. You can't quite see it now because that that is shining and that wants to be a dark, all right? So a very simplified version of a little Marrakesh town scene. All right. Um, yes, difficult from the drawing shapes, difficult from the heat, but simple in its plan, sky, Got the line, let it dry, buildings. Then when they were dry, shadow, and then we went in detailing up the shapes. So the map of it is pretty simple. Um, it was a challenge in one, but then the challenge you sometimes don't die. So you just need to finish off these bits now to whatever degree you feel necessary. Okay, um, 